Archaeological discovery is going to blow your brains out. The Bible says that Noah's Ark after the flood came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. And where was this large boat-like imprint found? On the mountains of Ararat. But this next fact will leave every atheist speechless. God told Noah to build the Ark 300 cubits long. That's 515 feet. And when archaeologist Ron White and his team turned up and measured this large boat-like feature. How long do you think it was? You guessed it. 515 feet. I'm going to be reacting to such exciting news and how it applies to you. God wants to tell you right now that you can have hope for your life, that whatever it is you are facing, whatever mountain you are looking at in your life right now, he has a promise and covenant that he's going to bring you out of it. And on this episode, I'm going to be walking you through how to have victory in every single situation of your life, how to trust God for his word, and how to make heaven real on earth. You know, a lot of people say things like, Jesus, I don't know what God wants in my life. I don't know what like Jesus wants. I'm just like letting God be in control. I'm just letting whatever happens, happens. No, actually, do you know Jesus? There's a reason we pray. There's a reason we take time and listen to God. There's a reason we are called to obey God. It's because God's will doesn't automatically come to pass. It's up to us whether or not we will say yes to him. There's a reason why Jesus prayed, Father, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And the good news that I bring to you right now is that God wants to bring goodness to your life and he wants to fulfill his word in your life. And we're going to be looking at this story, Genesis 9, 12. You know, Noah's Ark and the flood is something that so many people have criticized for so long. So many people have doubted that it's even happened, but we know that it obviously has happened. Archaeological proof now exists, but this is so cool. Genesis 9 and verse 12 says, the rainbow that I have put in the sky will be my sign to you and to every living creature on the earth. It will remind you that I will keep this promise forever. If you want to know how Noah's flood is still applicable to today and how the covenant that God made in that day applies to your life right now, and actually if you understand these truths that I'm going to reveal to you in this episode, you will understand how to walk in more victory, whatever it is you are facing right now. When I send clouds over the earth and a rainbow appears in the sky, I will remember my promise to you and over all living creatures. Never again will I let floodwaters destroy all life. When I see the rainbow in the sky, I will always remember the promise that I've made to every living creature. The rainbow will be a sign of the solemn promise. Listen, when God gives a promise, he's not just giving some fairy tale. He's not just giving some hopes and dreams thing that you just have to like hope will come to pass one day. When God gives a promise, he is literally giving himself to the situation. Do you know that the way that the, even the worlds were formed, the Bible says that the foundation foundation of his word. In Genesis 1-3, God said, light be and light was. And that's the message that God wants you to know right now, because in your life right now, you are facing so many mountains. You are facing so many struggles and temptations and worries and lacks. God wants you to know right now that you can turn that around. You can turn the tide by choosing to accept and run with his word. God's word doesn't just automatically come to pass in every single person's life we have the decision to yield to it. We have the decision to say yes to it. It's as simple as this. If somebody wanted to take you on a date and they wanted to take you somewhere, they say, okay, I'm gonna pick you up at seven o'clock and we're gonna go to dinner here, right? They pull up the car, they have the money, they have the full ability. The only thing left is what you want. We as humans are the only creatures that God created that have free will, that have the free decision to say, oh wow, yeah, we, we, we know evil and good and we choose good, right? And because we have that free will, God will never force himself upon others. Now you know the answer to the question, why do bad things happen on this world? Bad things happen on this world because people choose bad things, because people choose to go with evil, because evil has made itself known in this world. And actually Satan is considered and named the God of this world according to the Bible, little g, not big g. <laughs> but the good news here about Noah's Ark and Noah's Flood is this, God's promises never fail because God is his word. The Bible says in John 1 how Jesus Christ was the word of God put in a body. And then he died on the cross and completely paid the price for our sins. But we can understand that when we look at Jesus, we are literally seeing the verbal word of God made in a body. Here's the thing though about the word of God. It's still, and he still continues every single day of our life. And I'm here to just tell you that the promises that God has given you of goodness, of prosperity, of health, but more than those things of joy, of peace, of life, a satisfaction, a contentment in whatever situation of life you are in, you can be joyful because you know that God has your back because you know that you're completely saved, eternally redeemed, eternally chosen. The king of the universe has chosen you. So shut down those hating thoughts. Shut down those tempting and doubting feelings and distractions of your life right now and choose to just run into God's presence. Now here in the next three minutes, I'm going to tell you what Satan has done with the perversion of this covenant. He took the rainbow and now all of a sudden we have the LGBTQ movement known by the 
by the colors of a rainbow. It's so sad. Even whenever anybody sees the rainbow now, they don't think of the covenant God made with Noah. They think of the fake covenant that the LGBTQ has, right? And that's exactly what Satan does. He never creates. He only perverts. To anyone out there who is, uh, does consider themselves gay or homosexual, I'm here to just bring you good news that God loves you and God is completely for you. And that's not who you are. That's not your identity. Your real identity is found in being a daughter and son of the Most High God and being the son and daughter of the King. And he wants you to know that your true identity is found in the blood, in the price that was paid for you. It's not found in our sexual choices. It's not found in the things that we just think we want to be in life. Our real identity is only found in where he's created us to be. I remember when I came back from the hospital, I looked like a mental potato. Half my head was gone. Uh, I wasn't strong. I was only like 140 pounds. Um, it was really rough, right? But I knew that who I really was was redeemed and bought by the blood and born again. And I had no reason to lack or be afraid. When I came back, I remember everybody was expecting me to be some sad, depressed potato with no hope in life. But I was laughing. I literally told them, I was like, I'm going back to my apartment. Here I come. Life, here we go. Because that's the attitude you got to have. Satan says, oh, I'm going to bring you all these battles. I'm going to bring you all these horrible things. Bring it on. Let's go. Are you ever afraid of your grandma if she threatens to play you in a basketball game? No, you laugh. <laughs> you say, yeah, let's go. Let's play. <laughs> Hebrews 11, 7. By faith, Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this, he condemned the world, became an heir of righteousness that comes by faith. God did not have any desire to take out the world. God didn't just wake up one day and say, wow, I hate everyone. Let me just cause a flood. No, people chose to walk their own way. People chose to walk in wickedness. And the result of their wickedness was the flood. Too many times we blame God for every single bad thing that happens when really it's our own responsibility that we need to understand. But notice how in the midst of the worst darkness, there was a man who said yes to God. And there was a man when he said yes, he was completely protected, anointed, guided, and actually prospered even in the midst of it. And that's the message that God wants to tell you today. So many people are worried about inflation and confusion and children and family and parents, stress, anxiety, student debt, housing debt. I don't know, whatever it is you're going through in your life right now. And God wants you to know that in the midst of all this darkness, you can still prosper if you will trust his word, if you will say yes to him today. Let's pray wherever you are. Close your eyes with me. Just repeat these words after me. Father God, I say yes to your word. I say yes to your promises. I repent of sin. I repent of darkness. Jesus, I turn to you. Thank you for giving me life. Jesus' name, amen and amen. What if I told you that there was an inheritance waiting for you, scads of money, scads of opportunities waiting for you, but that all you had to do was first understand it was there and second, claim it. What if I told you that there was a whole life waiting for you on the other side of your knowledge of what God has done for you? I'm so excited. I never thought I would be an author. I didn't think I would just be some book writer, but God really put a message on my heart named Built Different. I'm super excited about it. It's a 90 day devotional. I'm not just here trying to make money or make myself famous. I care about you. And that's why I wrote this book. And in this 90 day devotional, you can understand the life that you are called to live. We, it's a simple breakdown of the Bible in our modern day culture so that you can really walk at the full inheritance of everything that God has provided for you. If you want to go get it, the pre-order is out right now. It's down the link in the description, the Barnes & Noble link. Finally, there's a part two to this video on Rumble down the link in the description where I actually break down the experiences I've had with the LGBTQ before that are pretty interesting. So be sure to check that out down the link in the description below.